Welcome to the Girl Power Alliance podcast, where you're going to meet and hear from some inspiring women with incredible stories who are leading in business and in faith. We are on a mission to impact the world by empowering women to dream bigger through kingdom-minded mentoring and leadership. This is where women grow. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I'm so excited. Uh, You know, one of the things that, that really God showed me with GPA was that this was going to be a global movement. And my guest today, Sharon, was the very first conversation that I had with somebody on another continent. So let me read her bio and this is going to be, let let me just tell you, like get your pen and paper and hold on to your pants because this is going to be, I know this podcast is going to go a lot of directions very quickly. So hang on. (laughs) Let me tell you about Sharon Ludlow. She is a mentor, an entrepreneur, a speaker, and a passionate provocateur for living a life full of purpose and impact. With over 27 years of business, marriage, ministry, and leadership, Sharon mentors and equips purpose-focused people into achieving success God's way. With biblical frameworks, practical advice, and strategic planning, she has been helping people from around the world deliver their God-given purpose. If that's not the picture-perfect like bio for exactly what we're all about here at Girl Power Alliance, I don't know what is. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you very much. Should I say good day because I'm from Australia? Please do. <laughs> I don't usually use it, but I will. <laughs> I heard it when I was in Australia. I heard it a couple of times and I was so tickled. I I even wrote on my Facebook that like, I'm going to say that from now on, even when I came back to the States, because it just is so charming. Every time I've gone to the States, I meet people. The first thing they say is, I love your accent. And I'm like, oh, what my accent? Gosh. And then they say, say something Australian. <laughs> so you have to say... Uh, g'day, fair dinkum, like what's the word? It is a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful accent and it just makes everything that you say, it makes me hang on every word, (laughs) (laughs) even more than I already did. So what you should know if you are listening or watching this is I I had to stop our, our conversation started to get so good. I said, stop, we need, (laughs) we need to be recording this. So um, we were just Actually, I'm going to dive back in, even though we have so many things that we could talk about. But Sharon and I were talking about the current kind of climate that's happening in the world today. There's, it's just a, there's so much distraction, so much chaos going on, and um, seeing the way that the church, I'm not going to say any church in particular, but the church, most of them are responding is. It's an interesting thing. Interesting is a really polite word. (laughs) I think Jesus would be very disappointed at the moment. That's my personal opinion. I'm a student of international politics. I have been for a lot of years. And I think that was birthed out of getting into the ministry in my 20s when I got saved. And we've travelled around the world, everywhere from, you know, Rwanda, Zambia, to the Pacific Islands, to the States, to all over the place for the gospel. And so my experience is in the breadth and depth of, you know, nationalities and people and everything. But what I have found is when you are coming out of the scripture, when you're coming out of the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings people into the oneness of God, the oneness of God almost eradicates the need to talk about race, colour, differences. In fact, the word diversity in itself is not even godly because God is in the oneness. He doesn't want to come with your differences. He wants you to come into him. So the world never forget the diversity that we all talk about happened at the Tower of Babel. It was a result of them trying to replace God. God at, in the beginning was in oneness and Adam and Eve were in the oneness. Satan came to destroy that. Mm. So you can see the repercussions in the earth today. But from the church, we're trying to be relevant. 
We're trying to be clever and in our marketing words and appeal to a bigger audience. And we have misaligned ourselves from the gospel of Jesus Christ, which never shifts. It never moves. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We quote that, but we don't believe it because we try to be relevant. What you're saying is just resonating. It's like shaking my body because it's such truth. And it's what I have been feeling. And, you know, even I'm on the other side of the planet from you. And there's been so much pressure in, in my church to react a specific and certain way. And it has just, it has felt wrong. It's felt contrived and it's felt off. Like it just feels off of what the point is. This is not for me. And we are recording this in June. Uh, so this is June of 2020. Um, I think this won't be released until August, but <clears throat> the current climate now is, is one that's very heated and there's so much division and, and, but I will tell you, my heart has been so full of hope. Like I feel, yeah. even though it looks chaotic and crazy and there's all these things, my heart, my spirit has been so full of hope knowing that God is, he is actually bringing together and what we don't see, what the media won't show you is something. It's like an earth shaking thing that is happening in our time right now. And I, there's been so much pressure in my own personal church for the people involved in the church, like the leadership to act a certain way and do a certain thing. And like I said, it, it has felt off for me because it's, it's like, we're, they are missing the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a thing about color. Like you said, it's not a thing about that. The, the thing is about Jesus and he came and he tore all of that apart. He tore it all apart. Exactly. It's about one thing and one thing only. Well, I, I think the church has got distracted. Yeah. I can tell you that a big shift happened in the church towards the end of the 80s, starting in the 90s. It started to go a whole different direction. And, you know, we got into the whole kind of everybody was broken up into groups everywhere. And, you know, I, anyway, I don't want to even get into all of that. But if you become a student of the church and a student of the movements of God and you know, the way God hit places through people mm -hmm. and people who took up the call into the gospel of Jesus Christ. So nowadays what I find is so many Christians come with their thing and then they bring God into it. Yeah. We totally have it the wrong way and we wonder why we can never access God's power, mm. his anointing, the things that are in the scripture. It's because we live our life and bring God into it. We pray our prayers for God to fix our solution instead of saying, God, I mean, what are you doing in the earth? Let me be part of it. So like I said to you before, it's not, I found that the gospel, when the gospel is being preached in the biblical way, in the public square where the unbelievers are, where the clash of civilization will happen, that is where you will see the power of God. And that by its very nature is going to make you intersect with politics and people of power in cities and all the rest of it because you are clashing. The kingdom is coming and the light is being shone in the darkness. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is the opportunity for Jesus to come in and show off and prove that yeah. he is exactly the same. He's alive. He's been raised from the dead. He is around the place, appearing here and there. That is the gospel. I mean, if you don't know a more exciting thing than that. So people get caught up. And this is not to say that people don't suffer injustice. We know that people have harsh. They all have different levels of suffering. But in Christ, that stuff you leave behind, you lay it at the altar of Jesus Christ, all your broken heart and pain and all the rest of it, and you're, you know what I mean? You come into yeah. Christ, all things are new. You're not carrying the legacy of your generations and all the other pains and hurts. In Christ, it's all things are new. Old things have passed away. Now you're in the kingdom. You've mm. come into the inheritance. I mean, I could preach to you all day about the subject. Most people never come into Christ because they come 
they come saying, I'm still a sinner, you know, I'm still trying, I'm not perfect, my generations have suffered and I still need to right that wrong. Instead of coming to God and saying, I'm going to lay it all here, I'm going to receive everything you have for me, heaven is where I'm more heading. I mean, Abraham went for the city, you know, what was it, the the city in heaven, the one that was being built in heaven, that was his objective. Abraham, who never had a Bible, who didn't have anything, but he was going after no the commandments, city, no nothing. Maker was God, the New Jerusalem. We fight for our rights and our political agendas and our you know church respectability in this life, and we fail. We're not called to do that. No. So that's why I'm always, even people I'm working with, I'm going, always remember, your business is actually irrelevant. <laughs> the call of God on your life is what you have to pursue because in that is where the blessing will come. In that is where the multiplication will come because you are pursuing God's heart for you, what you were designed for. Mm, yes. So most of these political, most of the rallies and the things that you're seeing across the world, we know that the majority of people are peaceful and they're trying to make a work, you know. Yeah. A lot of it are little tiny pockets of political agenda that have what they want to achieve out of it. Um, but we know biblically that these are signs of the times that we are in yes. and the church needs to be awake to that, not in a... Armageddon's coming kind of way, but in the sense that repent. Moving. Repent. You don't know he can come like a thief in the night, you know, but we've lost that urgency because our Christianity is about me and my journey and mm -hmm. I need to get closer to God and I need to, it's about me and my church. We become like this. When, is when we come into Christ, the very first thing he does is he says, okay, now you've got authority, go into all the world. Be a witness unto me. That's what he, you come into. But I don't meet them very much around the world, I've got to say. I meet the church, I meet the church people yeah. who love God and live their lives and maybe give their $10 for some other missionary and I'll never forget the Holy Spirit said to me one day, what are you going to say when you stand before the Lord? And he says, what have you done for me? Mm. And I thought, oh, my God. I mean, my, my 11-year-old son had a dream one night. He came out shaking. And he said, Mom, I could smell Hades. Oh. And he said, I saw the line of people mm. heading towards a man at the top. I didn't know who it was and I was in the line, I was shaking. And he got to the man and it was Jesus. Mm. And then Jesus smiled at him and said, what have you done for me? And he said, I woke up terrified because I didn't have anything to say. This was an 11-year-old. Mm. And I was so shocked because I thought, first of all, where did he hear the word Hades? <laughs> like, where did he get the word? Because most people don't use that word. No. And um, so, yeah, I'm just saying as believers we need to come back to what matters. We need to come back to the gospel, the power of God that was shed in Acts, you know, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2 where it talks about the power to become witnesses. This is the warrior that needs to rise up. They're the ones that God is going to send to and fro. They're the ones that's going to make the impact in the world. And everyone else can play the small game if that's what they want. But I know myself from a little farm out in outback Victoria, if you like, not that bad, but still it was a farm outside. You know, I had no hope of ever going anywhere, nothing, doing nothing. And yet we've ended up last year we sat in Parliament House in Ghana for the gospel. You know, in Zambia we had a gospel crusade that was requested by the ex-president wow. of the country. We've had... In Vanuatu, the prime minister was on the stage with ministers of his gospel, of, of the ministers of the government, welcoming the gospel in his nation in Port Vila. This was not because we went after it. We didn't make phone calls to make. God brought things together. So that, in my heart, that's what I, that's the provocateur part of my bio. 
becomes the fact that I'm not really politically correct. I, I stop trying you. to be politically correct. I will tell you what's in my heart by the Holy Spirit, what I have seen, what I've witnessed, and where I see some people step into it and then they fall back because you've got to come out and trust God. It's a faith journey. Absolutely it is. And, I, I mean, Jesus wasn't politically correct. No. I mean, he was the original provocateur, wasn't he? He spoke with this Holy Spirit, didn't he, with wisdom. He wasn't out there just trying to make enemies. No. He's not being stupid. He's not, no. going to clash. He's not trying to change society in that way. He came saying the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a, it's a whole different ball game. When it's a whole that. different conversation. And it's, I don't know. I just feel like I have new eyes this year or something. And it's, I mean, it's wonderful, but yet it's not. And um, not that I'd ever want to go back. It's like, you know, even the Bible says, once you know, <laughs> That's Once right. you know, then now you have to do something about it. And um, it's just an interesting thing for me. This is such an interesting time. Uh, and like I said earlier, I think it's an amazing time. I, I really do. I think things are happening that are moving forward the cause of Christ in a way that we've never seen, which is why it's so chaotic and it seems so much uh, division because you know the enemy is trying to flip people out well we know don't we that if you if you read the book of revelation if you read the book of thessalonians if you read matthew 24 if you read daniel if you start to study the times that we're in we know that it's going to be, there's a spirit of lawlessness. We know yes. the man of perdition is going to be revealed. We know the darkness over people's minds. So in some ways, this is why you can't go and reason with people. You can't reason with logic and good moral values and doing your good Christian duty because you're, it's a spiritual clash we're in. Yeah. Without the Holy Spirit, you're sunk. You, you're totally sunk. And you're trying to fight the war in the flesh. So you either either you're fighting it in the flesh or you're one of those people that stay in your cupboard and pray and get God to do it from heaven. God, you go and do that. And God's looking at you going, hey, I sent my son. What more do you want me to do? That's what you're for. I mean, the scriptures tell you, don't they, that angels were searching for this thing. The prophets were searching for this thing. They, they would have done anything for what we have. Yeah. But we go, oh, no, but God, but God never called me. He, did, he didn't call me. He didn't speak to me about that. And I always look at them and go, do we read the same gospel? Do we <laughs> read the same Bible? <laughs> uh. You are called into Jesus Christ. We are all called into that. When I hear people say, I've been called into business and I've been called into this and I've been called into, I go, are we in the same gospel? <laughs> are we? Because you are called into Jesus Christ and how he manifests in you with your gifts and your talents and the desires in your heart, that's how he wants to use you. Yeah. But the calling is into the kingdom. It's into God. Mm. You know, and he manifests in you in different ways. So that's that's the most exciting thing about intersecting with Christians who who get it. They've got that biblical, they're coming out of the Bible, because in there is all the power words, you know, all the power things, you know. So I could preach all day. You should just stop me. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. I, I do want to, though, I do want um, our listeners to know a little bit about what, I mean, I read your bio, but what, what do you, so you are coaching and mentoring people. Tell, tell people how they can work with you. What do you do? Well, besides stand on the mountain with fire and <laughs> preach. <laughs> well, I, see, I'm part of the ministry council for global evangelization, right? That's that is my primary area. I um, so we go into the nations and organize gospel events in the public spaces. Awesome. Outside of that, I, I've had a number of years now since early two thousands when I first got online with websites when my kids were little, you know, and you start to kind of dabble in things. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, I started to get into kind of natural organic products and then I was like, okay, this has got too much, I need to learn too much to stay in this industry. I moved on to um, e-commerce, selling children's clothes for a number of years and we had a lot of success with that. I mean, we were on the television and newspapers used to ring us and all that, like we had a great time with that. And at the time I remember the Lord saying, but really you need to be serving people because you've done all this other stuff. You need to help people because everywhere I'd go, I'd see Christians in the struggle, yep. no matter what level they're, they're supposedly at, you know, the, the Christ factor, the Holy Ghost factor, and they didn't have people who could bring them into the faith zone is what I call it, right? Yeah. So I, I actually started going, well, I don't know how to coach people. You know, when you think you're inadequate, <laughs> you know, you think um, you hello. need you need a certification, you need something, right? And so at the time I didn't know, I thought, I don't know how to coach people. And I was working with a coach at the time going, I just don't know what to do here. And uh, at the time she suggested the John Maxwell team. So I ended up going to get certified with the John Maxwell people, lovely bunch of people. Mm -hmm. But even in that, I'm like, God said, you're trying to wear Saul's armour. This is not what I've called you to do. I've called you to be in the thing that I've already been putting you in now and so what happened was I started to get phone calls from people saying can you help me <laughs> you know I'm trying to set up a business but I don't want to be out of alignment with God uh. I, I want to you know I really want God first I want to serve the purpose of God but I just need you know I need to talk through my business I need this and that and so that's kind of how in the end out of this out of the need to serve God and bring that spiritual thing as the center and so grace, that's how grace and confidence really was born because I was like, God, these warriors of people who will help um, serve you. I'm not about the whole kingdom entrepreneurship. Other people can keep all those words. Again, to me, a lot of that is we're, we're in our good works. We're trying to serve God. Mm -hmm. we, we, get a, we build our wealth and we give a little bit to God. I wanted to flip that on its head because I was like, no, God, I'm all in and if you take care of my life along the way, that's the blessing. Mm. So that's how I got into coaching and mentoring. I basically will just, for me, it's very individualised and it's um, as I can fit it around the gospel things and I just come into relationship with people. It's very spiritual. We pray together. I'll listen to what's in their heart. And it really, it's just that kind of coming alongside, helping them come into the things of their heart, listening to the Holy Spirit. But also, you know, they're getting into the practical elements of trying to figure through their business, what they want to achieve in their marketing, in their different things. And so I'll just come along. And then when I don't know something, I'll go, okay, you need to go and work with X, Y, you know, them, them, them. They're the better ones for this sphere. Um, so that that's kind of how I got into the mentoring and the coaching because I'm not like an average business coach. I don't sit there with just purely business. My, I never, my I would thrust have never is that. that you're going to operate with God. <laughs> I would have never guessed that about you. You seem no, so no, no, no. <laughs> Wow. So do you work with people outside of Australia though? Yes. 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 I mean, I've worked with people in the UK, people in the States um, and, you know, and mainly Australia and some even South Africa. And, cool. Um, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we work out time zone things. That doesn't really become a big issue. You know, Not when anymore, you both huh? really want to achieve something. Um, and like I said, I'm always, I'm relatively flexible around the important things. Yeah. You know, especially if I feel like the Lord's really opening up doors. I'm very, I, I'm more interested in going that way than having a schedule full of. Right. I feel the same way. Like it's all about quality over quantity for me. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. That's, 100%. There's no other that's, way. 100%. <laughs> hundred percent about, about everything, even when it to the world sounds crazy. Well, a lot of people really, they have that, they have the vision and the drive to be very analytical and build the business in a certain structured way and all the rest of it. And, and that's obviously something that God has put in them. I guess you have to be careful in it though, that, um, my one, my one check is always about the Holy Spirit. 
because the experts come and tell you this is a situation, this is how you should do it, this is the truth. And the experts have a place. They have the skill. They have the knowledge. But the Holy Spirit and faith might take you in a different direction that looks like it's not going to work, like you're going to risk everything, and yet that is where the blessing is. Yes. So that's why I always say to people, I I really admire the people that want to go and build the next BHP or the, you know, whatever. Knock yourself out. Go and do it. If it if that's in your heart and you know that you're going to be the one who puts $10 million up for the next gospel crusade and you're going to pay someone, you know, send a whole lot of people there to go and minister to three nations at once, if that's the goal in your business and God is going to multiply you. But if your goal is for me to have three houses and then, you know, just put about $100 in the offering every week, well, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> It's just a whole different thought process and it's a whole different mission. Absolutely. Um, so tell people how they can find you. Like what is your, where are you on the internet? Where are you on social media? Uh, so on any social media, I'm just me. So it's a Sharon, which is S H A R R Y N. I never tell people that unless they ask specifically for the spelling. <laughs> but Sharon Ludlow is where I am on social media. And the website is graceandconfidence.com. And At the moment, I only have an application process. I don't have general stuff out there because I work things around a schedule, you know. But, yeah, they're welcome to come and say hello. Go and say hello and just follow yeah. this. I mean, you're just a, a woman to be followed. That's <laughs> That's it. You're a woman to be followed. You're a woman to be watched and listened to. If you're listening to this podcast, then all of the information on how to connect with her will be in the show notes. If you're watching the video, all the information will be right below in the details. So we want to make sure that you can connect with her and just receive some of her fire. I mean, that's just fire. I mean, you're just, you are a breath of beautiful truth, fresh air in a world that is murky with smoke. And I just, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed every word, even like before we started recording. So you guys missed some of it. I got all of it. Um, So I just appreciate you. I appreciate your heart, your drive, your love for the Lord. And the fact that you share that so passionately. I I love that. Thank you. I really appreciate the space to be myself. Uh, well, and it's not even to be myself. I think sometimes the Lord wants to show some parts of himself that may not be revealed. And so if people let you be you and let the Holy Spirit say some things, you never know what God wants to do. Don't you love that? I, it's, it's my the favorite best thing. way of life. It's my favorite thing. So people will specifically for the podcast, they'll be like, so will you send me the questions? I said, well, we'll go in this direction, but I just want you to know, like, we're going to go where the Holy Spirit leads. Yeah. Yeah. Look, any any day, if you've got a choice between talking about God and talking about business, I'm, I'm going to talk about God for months and months and months. And then someone goes, do you do business? Oh, yeah, I do business as well. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think that one of my goals with, or let me reword that, one of the goals that God put inside of me with, with starting Girl Power Alliance was to open up the conversations because there's so many, there are specifically women, there are so many women in the marketplace and these are women that love Jesus and they would like to talk about him more, but they mm-hmm. have been told the lie that they can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, aren't equipped, aren't right to, they're not, you know, eloquent enough. They don't know enough, whatever. And so my, one of my big passions here is to open up the conversation. Just yeah. Let's just open up the conversation and talk about this amazing God who has taken you all these crazy places and who's blessed you in so many ways so that other people can stand under that blessing too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's what life in Christ is. We're supposed to be the city on the hill, right? It's a light in the world. Well, you know better than to talk, to do it, talking about him. (laughs) You're like a, what's the brightest light that there is? That's you. You are (laughs) Amazing. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I'm so happy we got connected. I know this is just the beginning. I I mean, I know that God probably has great. I feel that like we're, 
this is not just about a podcast or content. I just feel like there's something. And so I'm super excited and just happy to know you. And thank you for so much for getting up early in Australia to record this uh, podcast. No, you're welcome. It was a blessing to connect with you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Wow. What a phenomenal podcast that was filled with so many nuggets. I just, I've listened to it a couple times actually. (laughs) And each time I have something new to take away from the knowledge that Sharon just shares with us in this recording. So thank you, Sharon. Just such a beautiful soul. Um, She is actually has one of our courses this month. It's called Permission to Succeed. It is a life-changing course about the way that God works in your business. I mean, really, it can apply to anything, but specifically, that's what she was talking about. It's just phenomenal. I'm going to go back and do that course again. Um, Courses, all of our courses are available inside the Girl Power Alliance membership. So head over to girlpowerlines.com if you want some more information about that and all the other resources we have, the one-to-one coaching and mentoring that happens literally on a weekly basis. Um, we also have the Bloom Summit that is coming up. Very excited about that. It'll be our very first summit, a virtual summit happening in November. And I believe that the registration for that is going to be available very soon. You can go to thebloomsummit.com. For all of the details and information, get yourself registered for what I believe is going to be a transformational event. I believe lives are going to be shifted and transformed as a result of these amazing women at this event. So you don't want to miss it. I know you don't. (laughs) Oh, Girl Power Alliance is such a blessing in so many lives. We're waiting for you. This is where women grow. (laughs) 